Darnell Dozier of the Princess and Lady Cavaliers. He's got nine rings now. We'll talk about it more coming your way on ESPN Radio 94.1. ESPN Radio 94.1. You're listening to High School Sports Talk on ESPN Radio, presented by VirginiaPreps.com. Now back to your hosts, Matt Hatfield and Coach Ed Young. Yeah, we'll get it to fall. Rebound for Edison. I gotta do it. The dynasty rolls on from Virginia Beach. The Princess and Lady Cavaliers victorious, 61 to 45, a five feet. Five state titles in a row, nine state championships for the powerhouse program from the Tidewater area. Number nine, wow. Five in a row. There are coaches who pray every night to get here at least once in their career, let alone win. PA, as we said earlier, makes it on their schedule yearly. We will be the state championship and we will try to get a win. They've done it nine times, five in a row. There you heard it. Prince of Sand coach Darnell Dozier of the Lady Cavaliers. We saved the best for last, Ed, as he comes on now. 606 and 53 overall in 23 seasons with nine state titles. Only one finger left to put a ring on. And we say good morning and congrats, coach. It never gets old, does it? Well, it doesn't, but I do. <laughs> That's all I can say. Well, it's wonderful, though. It's wonderful. How's it feel this morning as you kind of reflect back? It's been a couple of weeks since you won the, the ninth state title, fifth in a row. Uh, you knew that this group was going to be well positioned with pretty much everybody back from last year's team, uh, led by the likes of Zaria Wiggins, who's going to Mississippi State, Brianna Jackson, who was the state player of the year, and Tywater player of the year, newcomer for you, coming over from Salem. And a bunch of good young girls who were on the team last year in reserve roles started a little bit, and they really picked up their play even more this year. Yeah, you know, when the season started, I felt we had a really good chance of being really good, but I didn't think we'd be as good as we were. We were really good. I mean, they were really good. Uh, I just didn't know what to say. Our practice was really bad, but our game was really good. That's what I can say about this year's team. Coach uh, Ed Young here. Once again, congrats. Um, Yeah, nine, five in a row gets old, but you know what? Like you say, just keep getting old. Just keep it coming. Uh, you got one more finger, and then you got to start working on the toes. Make them toes look good with these rings. Yeah, I got one around my neck, so that, that's I still got two fingers left. So because one's a necklace, so it's good. All right, so you, you're, so you're t- you're letting the world know for sure you got at least two more good years in you, at least. So we don't have to ask you about. You know, we just talked with Kenny Brown, Lake Taylor, and he's at the other end of the spectrum. He got his first, but there was a little bit of rumor going around that he might be done coaching. But he's kind of said that no. I, I want to come back, and, you know, it's tremendous. Just listening to him in terms of going through the whole journey was tremendous. And Tim Rice won a, the state title. Lancaster's talking about um, hanging it up. So we're not even going to ask you. We already know you're going for two for sure. And then I got a strong feeling that you're going to work on the toes after that. So uh, we're not even going to ask you about that. Well, you know, it's, 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 it all depends on my health. My health is good now, but you never know when your health can change. I'm I'm having fun doing it now. The kids are having fun. The kids still respond. So as long as that happens, I continue to try to do it. You know, when I think it's past me, I'll just step down. You know, but right now I'm in good I'm in good shape, and kids are still coming to PA. And uh, what can I say? You know, I just will stick it out. You know, coach, I got you. You mentioned how you said you guys would be really good. You didn't know you'd be this good, and you were really good. And you know, I'm going to piggyback. You guys were extremely good. I mean, you were just destroying people left and right. I think it was 56 points per game, the margin of victory in the playoffs at one point. At yeah, one point. I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's playoffs. Those are against teams that aren't too bad. Now, I say to you from one coach to another, um, how do you keep them motivated? You say the practices weren't quite what you wanted, and as coaches, I, I know exactly what you're saying. Of course, the, the – regular fan will say, well, coach, you're, you're winning the game, so you must be doing something right in practice, but still drives us nuts when they don't do what we want them to do in practice. How how do you get a team this good to stay so focused to get to the where you expected to be, win a state title? Well, you know, I think it comes along with, like, in practice, we scrimmage, we break up our starters in different ways. You know, we don't know we have to start a team. 
Sometimes we don't even know who's going to start a game on game night. Uh, I have kids that are really dedicated to basketball. I like a whole lot of coaches have three or four. My first set, nine or ten, I'll probably dedicate it to basketball. I have parents that don't get involved that much, and it makes the job a lot easier, you know, when kids really want to do something. And I have those type of kids that really want to do it. I have those parents that just sit back. And sometimes, just like most parents, sometimes they're not really 100% happy, but you got to say, my kid's on a winning team. She's playing, and she's having fun. I'm not going to step in there. And that's the kind of parents I have, and those are the kind I appreciate. Now, you did lose one game. Um, you aired a tournament uh, against uh, Long Island uh, up in uh, from New York, a uh, nationally ranked team such as yourself was. Um, now, what – and that was a buzzer shot, if I'm not mistaken, if, if I remember correctly. Yeah, basically what, from the backcourt. It, it was basically a shot from the backcourt, which was – if you look at tapes, you still had the ball in her hand, but, you know, you're not going to win that argument, so you, you just move on, you know. But it was it was a – Decent game. We didn't play our best basketball because of uh, certain scenarios that, that that happened that day. It was a, one of those storm, and we had to move to a new gym, and it was a whole lot of stuff. But you know, I have no excuses when I lose. It's like I have none when I win. So it's it's the same way. Now, in in getting that loss, do you feel that that helped you get your kids staying on the on the right path? Saying, "Hey, look, you know, if we don't do what we need to do, we don't play together. Somebody can beat us." I mean, and it's already been proven. Does, do you look at it that way, or is it just basically, hey, they hit a lucky shot that really shouldn't have went in because it's in their hands, and we just move on? No, I mean, after the game, the kids were so like, I, I didn't say a whole lot. My assistant coaches didn't say a whole lot. The kids were basically talking on, um, about different things, you know. Uh, we played good, but we just didn't show up. That was among themselves, you know. It was more them than anybody. And then they didn't want to be the first team to lose. And that's going to be a hard thing to follow. And one of these years, it's going to crumble. But everybody comes here. I don't want to be the first one to lose. So we'll see. We just roll it and play it year by year to year by year, you know. We're chatting with Darnell Totra. He's the head girls basketball coach of the Princess Anne Lady Cavaliers, a ninth state title, fifth in a row as they beat Edison 61-45 to a couple weeks ago here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio 94.1. And we'll get into your, your key Players, including the tri- trio of Division One signees already with Zaria Wiggins, Mississippi State, Michaela Dickens, Albany, and Brianna Faraby radford as well as some good ones coming back. But, Coach, we get asked it quite a bit, so we'll throw it at you. I mean, you know, people say, man, has he thought about coaching at her school, the collegiate ranks, even coaching the boys? I mean, I watched an interview yesterday where that was kind of brought up on another scale. You're kind of like the high school version of Gino Oriyama, who's at UConn. He gets asked that all the time with the UConn men opening as PTIs, Tony Kornheiser and Michael Wilbon asked him. So people ask us, so we'll throw it to you. What's the daily motivation for a guy who's got nine state rings and you can easily walk away? What's kept you at Princess Inn all this long? Well, good players coming in and saying, Coach, if you're going to stay there, I'm coming and I'm going to play for you. And you can't lie to kids any kind of way. And I'm, I'm just having fun. I feel if you go to college, you're always being dictated in a way, some type of way. Here at Princess Anne, I basically dictate the way I can do uh, basically things that I like to do on a court. And, you know, it's too much pressure in college. You know, you're expected to win. You got, you're dealing with adults then and, I'm just not that type of guy, you know. I, I love to cut the food and that type of thing. And some days we just go to practice and just basically chill out, you know, because there's a lot of pressure on these kids because some of my kids, are, uh, all of my kids are honor roll kids and some are IB kids, and they have to study. You know, they can't be all basketball sometimes. Sometimes you have to have that little life. And I try to get them that sometimes in practice. Some days we'll have a two-hour practice where we'll spend an hour just poking and joking at each other. You know, that's what we do, you know. But when it's time to work, we get down and do the work, too. I think what's been interesting, and, and Coach Young can piggyback on us a little bit, too, uh, Coach, in that the last couple of championship runs for you, you've seen great competition. You're always getting everybody's best shot, whether it's Edison or Highland Springs, whoever you see in the final. And there's a lot of good teams in girls' basketball in Class 5 that people may not understand about, but your team just playing at a dominant level. We saw Godiva Hubbard, who's at Minnesota, lead the way, huge tournaments, and then we saw Zaria Wiggins on the rise, and Zaria Wiggins was the headliner, and now we're seeing Brianna Jackson on the rise. Really, her ascension in the tournament, and it wasn't even a perfect game from her, but her ascension just being a double-double of force inside, I think, changed the whole game, and it made everybody else's game that much easier, you figure? Yeah, 
Yeah, it does. It, it makes it a lot easier. See, a lot of things, things that people didn't know within our own team, Zaria Wiggins was playing most of the year injured. And doing the last playoff game, set of games, she was injured really bad. We didn't even think she was going to play the state championship, but she kept saying, Coach, I'm going to play. I'm going to do whatever it is take me to play. Mm-hmm. She was injured two days before that. The whole year she's been having a knee problem. She was never 100%. Not even close sometimes, probably about 75 or 80, you know. And we were just having that, well, you know. And But our bench stood up big. Isaiah James, who I think is one of the best basketball players I've probably seen at an early age. She is really going to be a sensational player for us. And I have other kids on the team, that Jasha Clinton. I mean, I can go on and on. All my kids are pretty good kids, you know, and they can show their skills on any night. You just don't know who's going to show up on what night. This year we had kids – double uh figures about five or six kids a night you know and half of those kids will be back i'm quite sure they'll get a whole lot better now coach you know i was going to bring this up I, I, you the um jones girl the uh, james girl the freshman mm-hmm. her poise unbelievable and i know i'd heard about her a little bit before she stepped into your line as a freshman and i remember mm-hmm. saying to matt on the sideline over there too i said this is a girl I can't project d- deep in the future, but I said, this is a girl UConn will be coming to talk about. And yep. I, I just think she's that good. And what what I notice about your kids is um, a lot of your, your – you do have freshmen on that squad, on a state t- championship type team, who you're not afraid to use here and there. And they just seem to go from that, that support role to, like, the step-up role. And, yeah. uh, you know, I just I, talk about that. You know, Isaiah James – and I can say this, would have probably been a starter on any other team probably in this state, you know. But she's on our team. Our team was already gifted. Our team was loaded. If she goes to college, if she goes to a team that's loaded and gifted, she may not be a starter. By me not starting her, making her prepare herself for the future in case this doesn't happen. Not only that, we were already had, we were not in a transition year. So, and she learned a lot, you know, it's good sometimes because most parents think that when their kids go to ninth grade, they got to come there and play right away. And they're really not ready to play. You know that, Ed, as well as I do. Very few kids are ready to play in the ninth grade. But if you ask a parent or an AAU coach or somebody off the street, oh, yeah, she's the best. She can play right there. But it's more to the game than just making a basket. You got to play both ends of the floor. You just got to be humble. The humble you are, the better off you are. Zari Wiggins wasn't a starter her first year. A lot of people never realized that. But the thing about it is she wanted to play and she stayed there. And those are the type of players that we like and this type of players that we usually get. Well, you're, and you're right about that. A kid is being told to us as coaches, well, they can do this and they can do that for you. But we got to get them in the mix. Yeah. At the high school level, there's a lot more game planning going on. There's things you got to – really work for and working with your other teammates, get them to work within the concept of what you're trying to do. Your program, obviously probably the best for this one. Look, we are already on the right path. We don't need somebody to come in and turn things around. We we don't need to be turned around. We're already winning. They need to come in here and fit in. And then if they fit in, you know, to theirs is everything. Once they get settled, a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah. You know, it's just like Gino's team. Gino could probably get any kid in the country. But he has to have kids that fit in. Some of the kids that he get, we don't even have never heard of. They're not top 25, top 10. They're just kids that fit in his program and do what he has to do. And that's what I like to do. I like to get kids that fit what we try to do. Not kids that are going to be messing up in school every day, parents sitting in the bleacher telling them how to play the game, or some boyfriend coming to practice, hanging out at the door, waiting for him to get out. We don't want those types of kids. We want kids that want to play, kids that want a future in life. That's what we want. Well, as strange as it sounds, guys, you know, to lead a team in scoring as a freshman coming off the bench, that's unheard of. But, and this is going to sound almost cocky, but it's true. You have a better chance to lead your team in scoring coming off the bench because of the blowouts. You get more playing time in the second unit than the first unit oftentimes. See, you as a coach would know that a lot of people wouldn't have known that, and that's exactly what I did, you know. I right. mean, you know, let the kid get relaxed, feel comfortable, because if you come to a team, I, I was, a kid is going to feel that they are pressured, 
it's no pressure. Just get out there and play. But if you're not starting, you can sit and relax and just come in there and do what you're supposed to do and keep it going, you know. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of pressure coming into ninth grade and being a starter. In and day in and day out, and you getting pushed in practice every day hard, not just being playing, you know. And our practice is sometimes it could get a little heated in there, you know. And a freshman shouldn't have to be uh, to that, you know, just relax and play. And I think next year she will be, whoa, I'm, I don't even want to think about how good she can be next year. Or any of our rest of our players, for that matter. I mean, we got some really good basketball players left. Well, you know, Coach, to piggyback on what you're saying, A is a freshman. You're a freshman. You're just stepping in the limelight, okay? We don't need to give you the whole spotlight. You're just in the limelight, so let's just go from there. A lot of other people want to project on us as coaches, well, this kid can do this and that for you, because they want to see the kid hurry up and go to UConn, so to speak. Let's let them enjoy their high school career first. And as you said, they got other things to do. It's not just basketball 24-7. And, and we're the ones as coaches that have to balance all that. It's not the people, it's not other people, sometimes not even the parents, so to speak, because the parents get a little crazy about kids should be doing this, kids should be doing that. Well, let them be a kid first. And as coaches, sometimes we're the ones that have to have the level head. Exactly, Ed. You're exactly right. But, you know, it takes a coach to know that, you know, you, you can't just listen to everybody because everybody got a different opinion. As a coach, you have to make the final decision. Because then you're dealing with these kids' lives and everything. You know, you just can't throw them in the fire all the time. Although I wanted to really bad throw her in the fire, but it, it was it was the same way with Liz. It was the same way with Zaria. Same way. Dee was the first one, I think, that came and started. Hubbard, she started the first year. That's because we had eight freshmen to come in that year. And we had no other choice. But if I have a choice, no, I'm not going to start a freshman. A lot of parents have said, I wouldn't bring my kid there because I won't, don't want her to sit on the bench. Well, that's fine. Go somewhere else. That's that's fine with me. You sit on the bench. That doesn't make you a, a shero. It just makes you think that I have to work harder. That's all. A few more minutes with Darnell Dozier. He's the head girls basketball coach at Princess Anne High. State champions yet again for the fifth consecutive year here on High School Sports Talk presented by VirginiaPreps.com on ESPN Radio. 94.1, and I think the thing that's that's so unique about your program is you have so many other players that can lead the team in scoring. We mentioned Michaela Dickens, who's going to Albany, Brianna Radford going, uh, Freire going to Radford, and uh, they accepted their roles. I'm not forcing it. But uh, the thing I also looked at, too, was, Coach, back in January, I remember you guys had a tough battle with Lake Taylor, who made it to the state championship in Class 4, and you won that game coming from behind. Elizabeth Williams was there, and she was at a few other of your games, and how also helpful is it for, the, for these young ladies to see who was really an iconic player in this area and has gone on to the WNBA, played at Duke, uh, to have her come back and support the program? How much does that help your program continue to move forward? Well, Liz, as most people know, is a tremendous young lady. As a matter of fact, I'm sitting outside the gym now. She's in the gym having a camp right now as we speak. You okay. know? And, and you know, I mean, you can't ask for a whole lot more support than Liz. Liz is a tremendous, you know, I just, I think Liz is most, well, I don't know. It's not a word that can describe how wonderful she is, how much she cares. She does a lot of work down in Atlanta. You know, she plays with the Atlanta Dream. She does a lot of work for kids down in Atlanta, you know, and I said, you got to bring some of that back up here. And, you know, she will. But, you know, I, it's unfortunate during the summer, AAU is going on, and she's working during the summer with the Atlanta Dream and during the off season. She's in China. Germany or wherever the case may be where she plays at, you know, and this is the first time she's been out. Actually, I think she flew in last night just to do this camp today, and she's going to fly out tonight, if I'm not mistaken. But I just appreciate Liz and the rest of the players that I have two or three other players that played in our program. We have the uh, Granby uh, coach, Brittany Harmon, who played here. Mm -hmm. We got a few more kids in there that play. Sharice Grant is here, who is my assistant and played at ODU. Well, they're all here this morning trying to make these kids better, you know. And and I appreciate that. It lets the old guy just sit back and look, and, you know, just look sometimes. And I <laughs> think I deserve that. <laughs> well, and you mentioned Sharice Grant. I thought I was going to get you out on here, Coach, is that, uh, of course, she played great player for you back in the day and also played at Old Dominion, where we are, the home for ODU basketball here on ESPN Radio 94.1. And now on your staff, uh, there's been whispers that whenever that day comes, which is not going to be anytime soon, as you highlighted earlier, she could be the one that could be the one that takes over for you. Uh, what was it like to have her on the bench this year? Really wonderful. You know, uh, 
last year I had Kalani Vick, and she had to go to Japan, you know. And so we, we asked Sharice to come over, and, and, you know, Sharice is busy. She works for the city of Norfolk, and so we had to adjust our practices for her to be here. And we're so glad to have her. She's taken to the kids. The kids are taken to her. You know, it's good to have that female voice, especially when you got a uh, male dominant uh, coaching staff. But Sharice has been nothing but just a wonder for us. You know, the kids love her. As long as the kids love her, uh, as far as her taking over, we'll just wait to see. You know, I, I hope she does. You know, basically, I don't know whether that'll be my decision. I don't think so. But I think I'll have a little say so with it. Coach, look, we really appreciate you giving that time, and congrats again. Uh, never gets old. Number nine, five in a row. Um, I'm already predicted. I said it at the sidelines. They just didn't put me uh, on the air, but I said it when I broadcast your game. They will get number 10. Oh, that's going on a limb, isn't it, Ed? Yeah, really? Yeah. They're getting number 10 next year. You can write it down now. Once again, just like the NCAA tournament right now, everybody's fighting to see who gets to play UConn in the championship. It'll be a state fight next year to see who gets to play PA in the state championship. Well, you know, we are, we're going to stick our team out there. It's going to be young, but we're going to put them on the national circuit again next year with a bigger national crowd. We hope to bring in Paul the six here here at Princess Anne and play them early on in the season if we can. Well, they're number game. five, and they're number five in the country. We're number ten right now, but you know, I'm just going to throw them in the fire and see what they do next year. And that's what I all can do is to do your best. Well, we wish you the best, and don't forget now, winter buys. So when I see with uh, Boo's place. Uh, uh, at the concession stand there. Now, I know that'll make you go broke because this food is like, you know, you got to give him $5 just to order for, for Boo. Yeah, you, it's a, it's a boot. you have to be a millionaire to eat there. Yeah. I work there and I can't afford to eat there. Yeah, it's so, a boot yeah. tax. It's called the boot tax. Don't boot don't question tax. it. You know, it's a boot tax and you pay that and then you pay for the food. So, but anyways, uh, but again, congratulations to you. It's always a treat to, to talk to you. It's always a treat to watch your teams play and continue success. Thank you. I appreciate it. My team appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. We'll talk soon. Thank you. That is the one and only Darnell Dozier. What a job he's done there at Princess Anne High in Virginia Beach. The Lady Cavaliers win another state title, their ninth, fifth in a row here on High School Sports Talk, presented by VirginiaPreps.com here on ESPN Radio 94.1. Do we have one more quick break? One more quick break, and we'll say goodbye, everybody, right here on ESPN Radio 94.1.